Okay, this workflow is going to uh, cover our uh, design option workflow with InfoWorks 360 by creating conceptual models inside of Formit. So just to give you um, an overview of InfoWorks 360, what we have is various data, for, data sources here. Um, so I've got like some different uh, tower options and they've all been brought in and configured to work with um, the design option interface here. So if I go down to my T1 proposal, you'll see I've got a format model here for tower one or I can flick to uh, say tower three and a new one comes in and the old one is removed. So I want to uh, create a fourth tower option and uh, currently I've just cleared the side proposal I've left in the um, existing plinth here. Uh, I'm going to go to format and uh, do a very, very quick uh, massing exercise. Um, format is incredibly easy to use. Um, under the hood here I'm just going to flick to uh, metric and bring down a aerial image of my particular site. So um, I've just gone to uh, my site here, navigated to uh, 60 mile in place. Um, I've got my satellite image turned on and I'm going to import a satellite image. And uh, you'll notice that it's gone to uh, a default location in America. So let me just uh, cancel out of that and I better make sure I've got it typed in here. 60 uh, Martin place, Sydney, New South Wales. Then import uh, the satellite image and go finish importing. Now I have this information uh, inside my format environment to design off of. If I go to my uh, top view here, and there are hotkeys, you can see uh, top view is ZT, so ZT will take you to your default hot view. I want to just rotate my um, XYZ gizmo here to um, align with the, the building footprint here. So I'm just going to right click, go to uh, set axes, um, and I'm just going to grab the uh, blue point here, and just rotate to get it right with the building, and uh, return, escape, and do that again. There we go, um, and now we've got our grid um, aligned here. So uh, we're going to start off uh, doing some design work here. We're just going to use the basic uh, sketch tool, and I'm going to uh, do a rough overlay here um, representing the building footprint. Hit the view cube here, which is ZD, and uh, just escape out of that. Click it once, uh, then click it again to extrude up. I'm going to go to 24 meters. Uh, if you want to bring up the um, type in the text box, hit tab 24. And now we have um, our base podium for our tower design. Next thing I want to do is uh, draw another rectangle, but I want to draw it on the face of this object. So you can see here we've got our, our snapping gizmos. Um, we can snap anywhere in the model. Again, we can tab to maybe do the, uh, the length, escape. Uh, click it once, click it again to extrude it up, so 4 meters. And then uh, I'm going to do one more um, uh, rectangle type shape here. And maybe I'll set that back a little bit. Uh, and I'll take that out, maybe 30 meters, bring that across. You can see it's also snapping down a little bit. Make sure you've got the, uh, the gizmos. See the Y gizmo there is um, showing that it's aligned. So I'm just going to click on that. And now I have um, the footprint for my building here. Um, I'm going to double click on it. Um, and I'm going to also grab that other face as well. So I'm going to click that one once. Um, click the other one. I'll just hold down shift to do that. Then I'm going to extrude the whole thing up, um, say 70 meters. Um, and now I've got um, a basic uh, tower and podium. I do have some of the tools turned on for displaying hidden lines. Uh, you can go here under the hood and uh, maybe turn off those hidden lines. So now that should be working. Visual style. I'll turn off a lot of this stuff. Um, Here we go. So that, that's sort of the, the look and feel I want to be working with at the moment. So I've got my uh, my shape, my podium, and the last thing here, just to uh, give us a bit of definition, I'm going to make it a little bit higher, maybe take it up another 60 meters, and uh, I'm going to grab that top face, and I'm going to uh, rotate, and I'm going to take it, uh, say, 45 degrees, and now I've got like a twist. So here we have my um, twisty tower, 
Um, it may not be perfect, but um, it's a <laughs> it's a start. It's something new, um, and I've now finished finished my model. So from here, um, you can actually uh, save this out. So I'm just going to save it. Um, it saves to your A360 uh, drive. I save as. I'm going to go uh, uh, save sketch. And this one I'm working in Tower Option Five. And instead of going via the Revit route, I want to go through through Max. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to export um, the OBJ as um, a local download. So you can see here it's downloading as a zip. Um, show in folder, and I'm just going to cut that out of that folder and put it in my folder that I want to do my design options in, uh, paste that, and then I just use uh, ZZip to uh, extract here. And now I have my um, MTL file and my OBJ file, I don't need my zip file, and I want to bring this into Max. So I've got Max open here in the background. I can just drag and drop that in. And when I click on Max uh, and just full screen my perspective by going Alt W, I now have um, a very quick uh, tower design. If I hit F3, uh, you can see here's the uh, wireframe geometry for that. Now the reason I brought it into Max, um, you can bring this directly into Infoworks. Um, so I could just go here and go to uh, 3D model, uh, data sources. So I'm going to bring up my D drive here, AU data, uh, format options and the option 5. I can bring this in natively um, and this will come in as a white model. When I double click it it's going to uh, display when I put it on building settings as a 3D model and uh, I can interactively uh, place that. Uh, for some reason this one has come in quite uh, big but you don't need to worry about that. Um, what you can do is you can uh, rescale it once it's inside of um, Infoworks. So I can either uh, edit it and rescale it down this way uh, to the height that I want. So you can see here I've got my height at being maybe 200 meters. And very quickly I've got that tower in here. Um, I can turn on my uh, visual effects, turn on high visual quality, and you can see it's starting to look a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, maybe some of the other stuff I can do is I can go to my application options and crank up the um, ambient occlusion to high, see if that looks a bit better. It's about the same. So that that's kind of good enough uh, for doing a basic uh, white model, but maybe I want to add some textures or I want to have a color or something. So this is where 3ds Max would, would come in. So uh, I'm just going to flip back to Max, here's my tower design, bring up my material editor and what's key to note here is your material editor should be uh, set uh, to work with uh, standard materials. If you need to find this just go to the teapot for the render setup and uh, down here in the first common tab down the very bottom is assign render and this is where you can flick between your rendering engines and, and materials. So I'm just going to turn off that little uh, lock there and bring up and just show you that you need to set it to default scanline render. Typically for most um, building design suite installs it'll be set to NVIDIA uh, Mental Ray and iRay. Um, so just flick that to scanline and then you're going to get the scanline material editor. So a couple of things we can do here. Um, basic texture editing 101, you've got the diffuse material. Um, so we can do colors, so I want this to be maybe the uh, the green tower for example, go OK, just drag and drop that on. Now we have a green a green tower, um, or I could uh, do another material here and I could add a, a texture map. So you just click on the little uh, dark button next to the fuse, go to maps, go to standard, bitmap, so it's like a JPG, and we could um, uh, grab an image from somewhere. So let's say um, I'll go to one of my folders in here where I have a 3ds Max folder and I do have um, some textures in here. Um, here's one of Carl. So I could add Carl as my texture. Um, when you double click on it you can see it's just sitting there. It's been applied to a sphere. I can right click, uh, I can just click on here and maybe apply it to a, a shape and simply just drag and drop uh, that material. I need to click on the show shaded material in viewport um, and then I also need to adjust the texture sizes because at the moment um, it's really either really small or really big. I can't tell just yet. Until I go to here and I click on my modify tool and go UVW map and now you can see cars sort of coming out in the tower. I go to box 
and uh, now we have him um, the full size and I can play around with the UVW map coordinates um, you know scale it as I need to could be multiple versions um, or you can just go down here and you can click in the alignment as being fit so uh, here we go this is my my, my cow tower um, and that's how you do a basic sort of texturing so from here you just uh, export out uh, export selected uh, and I'm just going to make sure I put it in the right folder so uh, let me just go up uh, to the correct folder uh, format tower options um, this one I'm exporting out as a DAE you could use FBX I find DAE to be better um, so tower option 4 CB and go save and go OK just going to use the default settings and now uh, we go back into our uh, um, InfoWorks environment let's get rid of that tower and uh, I'm just going to uh, pan across and uh, go back to 3D model um, I am going to grab the uh, tower option there it is, uh, the DAE file go open, double click on it uh, go to buildings, check it here we are, it's come through um, and then just go geolocation, I'm just going to interactive place uh, I'll just set that to send it 2D and this one again is coming um, <laughs> at a different scale uh, but don't worry about it, uh, we can easily uh, scale it up, hit close and refresh and here we have our Carl Tower, uh, I'm just going to select that once uh, hit the height, so we're looking at about 200 meters for our building height and we have uh, scaled it up and I'll just go to my top view here and just use some of the tools to uh, get this in the right location so there's my X, Y, Z maybe a little bit too big so um, I'm just going to drop it down a little bit maybe make it 180 so it looks like uh, when we go through the different interoperability um, changes between softwares uh, sometimes it must scale things just slightly so I think uh, 180 160 is probably about the right right height here and um, we can also rotate it as needed uh, but now here we have our uh, Carl Tower and we can uh, go here to our bookmarks um, start to see it in different locations so uh, here's my tower option view here um, I could even maybe adjust the uh, lighting under the analysis tools, so sun and sky and I'll maybe just move this around to uh, time of the day where this is going to be shown as best possible light All right, maybe something like that, end of the day and uh, here you have it, so this one has been set to T4, when I go back to uh, T3 it will flick to one of the other tower options, T1 uh, and then I go back to T4 and here we have the Calbass tower all textured so that's the workflow from format texturing a 3ds max design and then having it as a design option inside of InfoWorks